today's Mass is said for Richard, Colleen, and Stephen Grisadonia. Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace, though sinners, we are made just, and though pitiable, made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved to the grace of the Lord Jesus, in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent, and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this, as is written, After this I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord, who accomplishes these things, known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town, as he has been reading, as he has been read in the synagogue, 
on every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. A response, proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. My voice says the Lord, I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. My brothers and sisters, if there's one thing in the world we can all agree on, it's the very fact that we all want joy. We all want to be happy forever. That's one thing that we all have in common. Now the differences and the disagreements that arise among us is how to attain that joy. Right now, we live in a world and an age where we have really good technology. Um, we have an easy way of living with the techno technological advancements, um, the advancements in science and health, and just um, the general comfort we have of living in this world. More than ever in the history of the world, we have it pretty easy, and we have to admit that. And yet, through research, we are unhappy. 
a lot of the world is discontent with their own lives. And at the same time, my brothers and sisters, we live in a society and culture that is continuously divorcing itself from God, separating itself from God. Now, this is no coincidence why we are unhappy as a society because it's the result of this separation of God. God wants us to be filled with joy. Jesus says it here in the gospel, I've come so that your joy may be complete. Jesus wants us to be filled with joy, but we gotta remember what joy is. Now the world will offer us maybe um, false joys, right? We're often bombarded with advertisements, you know, and things. This will make you happy. This will bring you perfect joy. Whatever this new product is, this iPhone, right? Um, this app, you know, even um, this movie, right? Or perhaps even um, we can convince ourselves in believing that there's a particular person that will fill us with joy and that our joy may be complete because of some particular person that we love. But let's not be deceived, my brothers and sisters. Material things cannot give us the joy that God wishes to give us because they're material, they're temporal, they're fading, they're passing. We can reflect on this when we look at Genesis back in the beginning, when Adam and Eve were tempted by the forbidden fruit. Yes, it looked promising. Yes, it was delightful to the eyes, and it was probably speaking to them, you know, I will make your joy complete and full in reality, it, it did not. Yes, these things that are good in and of themselves because they come from God, God created all things, are good. And they do give us a joy, a kind of happiness, but only for a short time. And then they break, right? The older we get, the more we lose things. And when we lose things, it hurts, doesn't it? And so material things, temporal things, created things cannot give us the joy that we truly long for within. We all long for a joy that is infinite, that is full, that lasts for an eternity. We are created in a way where we have this infinite gap, this infinite a space within our souls to be filled. And temporal things cannot fill that gap, that infinite gap that we have. Only the infinite can, who is Almighty God. And for that reason, St. Augustine says, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. If we wish to have this peace and joy that we all long for, we must come to God. We must surrender to him and to his holy will and to live according to his commandments. Yes, Father, you say. If Jesus wants to fill me with joy and make my joy complete, how can I have that joy by denying myself? Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow after me. How can I have that joy by giving everything I have away for others, like the rich young man who went away sad? This is the great paradox of our Christian faith, isn't it? 
Joy is not, you know, being giddy or smiling all the time. You can still have joy while suffering, while experience great sorrow and grief. And that is maintaining the peace and calm within our souls, knowing that I am a beloved child of God. I belong to God as a child, and that Jesus is with me all the time, and that if I choose to follow him and keep his commandments and remain in his love, I will have a share in his blessed resurrection and rise to eternal life with him. I will merit that glorious crown that he promises every believer, everyone who follows him. And that is the joy, my brothers and sisters, that we live for. The joy of one day hearing the Father say to us when we get to heaven, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Imagine that. Hearing those words from Almighty God. Well done. Let us live this joy that we are children of God, that we have God, and that we come to him every time we come to Holy Mass, and that we receive him in Holy Communion, in the Holy Eucharist, that God, who is so big and so great, the creator of all things, comes to me and dwells in me in that most intimate way to give me his divine nature, to lift me up in his glory. And that's the joy that is given to us all through Jesus Christ. Let us follow him this day and every day of our lives. Amen? Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, 
Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Lenis Uncelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Salvatore our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our, br our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, in the unity of the Holy 
Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. Amen. 
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. An act of spiritual communion for those watching from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O 
graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the snares and devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin our souls. Amen. Regina Celi, Letare.